Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I'm going to finally do a project I've been needing for a while, which is a new clamp rack. I've got several small versions of clamp racks and other clamps just kind of strewn all about the shop. And this one fits the bill pretty nicely. It holds about 70 parallel or pipe clamps and about another 50 or so odd clamps, so about 120 clamps total. It's a fun project and a really quick build that you can use very cheap plywood on. First, I just wanted to take a few seconds to talk about our Christmas sale. We've been building these Thor's Hammer woodworking mallets for a while, and typically every Christmas we put them on sale for half price. This is the first year, however, that we're making ones with a laminated head with multiple different species of exotics. And while this is our first time to offer this type of a mallet head, this is actually our last year to offer the half price sale. One reason is because it really takes up a lot of time to build a large batch of mallets over the holiday season. And another is that we are actually going to probably be out of several species, such as the Lignum Vitae and the Cocobolo. These are two species that are on the IUCN Red List and the Cites Appendix 2. They're very endangered or threatened in their region and they're just no longer being imported into the US. So when we're out, we're out. If this is something you're interested in, there's a link in the description below to the website where they're on sale and the code to get them for half price. Thank you very much. Now we'll jump back on that clamp rack. So the first thing I did to start this project is get over to my local big box store and pick up some plywood. There's a bunch of plywood in it and it's definitely going to get dinged up with me putting clamps into the rack and taking clamps off of the rack. And so I didn't want to buy expensive plywood, so I got the cheapest stuff I could. I got a sheet of uh, some just construction grade exterior CDX ply and I got a, a sheet of sanded ply which had some damage on it. And sometimes at these big box stores you can ask the manager if they've got sheets of plywood that are slightly damaged or dinged on the corners, they'll give you a discount on those and I got that on one of these sheets here. After that, I set about cutting the parts into the various sizes that were required for this. And if this is something you're interested in building a copy of, I have a set of plans, complete set of detailed plans on the website. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. You can see this plywood here is really warped. Uh, sometimes when you get some of this construction grade stuff, it is, it's just not in great shape. But it really doesn't matter for a project like this. You know, there's a lot of different components. Once they all get screwed together, it seems to straighten itself out fairly nicely. There's one point at the end when you can see a warp, but it's really not significant. And I'll point that out when we get to it. As I'm cutting the corners off here, I'm actually moving the plywood over to a pencil mark I have indicated on my chop saw fence there. I've drawn that, so I'm not really guessing where these go. It's going, they're just going right up to the edge of that pencil mark that I have. That way I can keep them all consistent um, because an exact measurement doesn't matter. I just want them all to look similar. So I got to use my fancy Incra Miter 5000 sled for this, something I, I don't get to use very often, and I really didn't need it here, to be honest. Um, these are rectangles that I cut out uh, with the intention of cutting them in half to make two sides of the bracket which will hold the parallel clamps up and by dialing this in on the uh, the miter slat I'm able to just do one cut and get two identical pieces. Uh, it's definitely overkill. Like I said you can just draw a do, do a layout with a pencil, draw it out and just cut it with a circular saw. I thought this might save some time since I had 11 of these to cut. I needed 22 pieces. Uh, and it's just fun to play with once in a while, but uh, certainly not needed for a project like this. And before I forget, I want to give a shout out to everybody over at the King's Fine Woodworking community on Facebook. If you are on Facebook, you might check us out. There's a link to that down below too. And it's just a community of woodworkers helping other woodworkers. It's a place to share your work, uh, get advice, or help other people out who need advice. Uh, it's a private closed group on Facebook, uh, but anybody who is a woodworker is welcome to join. I probably could have set the miter sled up for this, but this particular piece was just a one-off. And no, the band-aids aren't from unsafe sawing practices. They are from handling wenge. Uh, rough wenge, I had to buy it to make these mallet heads that we've been talking about, and man, that is the most splinterful wood I have ever worked with. It's right about here where I realized I have showed cutting way too many of these parts, so if you tune out right about here, I'll know why. 
And finally, we'll cut some 2x4s to uh, act as the backbone of the structure of the brackets that are going to hold up these parallel clamps. And after that, we'll be ready to put this thing together. I'd like to take a second to say thank you for all of my Patreon supporters who are out there helping us out. Uh, without you guys, a lot of projects like this wouldn't get done. And it was, in fact, a Patreon supporter that suggested I built a clamp rack. They have seen clamps laying around in various places in my shop. And they said, why don't you build one? I want to see one. So we finally decided to make the time to get this done. So thank you to everybody over on Patreon. And if anyone out there is interested in supporting us, uh, you find the link to our Patreon page in the description below. Okay, so there's a quick overview of all the parts that are cut. And now we're ready to get some assembly done. So the first thing I'm going to do is build the 11 brackets that are going to hold up the, uh, the, the parallel clamps. Uh, these, of course, these will also work for pipe clamps. And the, what I'm doing is I've got a solid backbone of a 2x4 here, and I'm just going to make sure everything is square. Uh, of course, I probably should have glued it first, so I'm going to glue it now. And in order to speed up uh, the assembly phase here, I'm going to uh, tack this together. I'm going to use a crown stapler. I find that crown staples hold plywood uh, together just a little bit better than finished nails. But you could certainly use finished nails. There's nothing wrong with that because I'm going to follow this up with screws. But I had this thing handy, so I'm just going to do this. And uh, I'll make sure that it's nice and flush on both sides. This plywood being as warped as it is, I'm going to take extra time to try to get everything lined up nice and square before I actually tack it together. And the glue will give us a longer term hold, just make everything a little bit more secure. It might seem like overkill <clears throat> having uh, glue and uh, some crown staples and some screws, but remember the clamps are pretty heavy whether you use parallel clamps or bar clamps and this is designed to hold seven parallel clamps for example. So that's quite a bit of weight. That's probably 50-60 pounds, uh, maybe even a little bit more. And I just want this to really stand up uh, you know, over a long period of time. So we're going to take the time to make it extra secure. What I do when I'm dealing with some warped plywood is if I can't get two sections to line up at once, both flush at the same time, I'll line up just one and I'll come back and fix the other later by kind of pulling it back into place. So here I'm just going to focus on the top, getting the top nice and square, and then I'll come back when I flip it to the other side and I'll just kind of pull the bottom into shape to make it square because I know all my cuts are square. It's just a matter of the plywood being a little bent or warped. You can see that's out a little bit there. So I've pushed it in before I nailed it down. And then these get a top on them. Again, I'll just put a little bit of glue around the perimeter where that's going to glue down. And we're going to tack it on. My top does have quite a bit of bow to it. So if the finished nails don't pull it down tight, then I'll follow that up with some screws on the top uh, in order to secure it. If the finished nails do hold it tight, I'll just leave it here because it's a piece that's simply resting on the top and it itself doesn't necessarily need a lot of extra strength. If you're curious what size, I've used inch and a half crown staples. The plywood is supposed to be three quarters, it's just a tiny bit under. So that gives me about three quarters of an inch going through the wood and then about three quarters of an inch going into the wood down below. And then I've got a front cap here. This front piece is going to stick up just a little bit above the top so that in no case would one of the parallel clamps accidentally slide off the front end of this bracket and fall onto the ground, just like a little safety bracket piece there. So this one for sure is going to get screwed in because as I'm pulling the clamps out, I'm going to be bumping it, so I don't want this to break off. And then we'll just strategically put some screws uh, around the perimeter of it to make sure that it stays securely for the long term. And there you have it. That is one complete bracket. We've got 11 total to build for this, and there they all are. It just took about 20 minutes to put them all together.
Okay, so next we're going to be screwing the main part of the body together. Uh, I'm going to screw the side to the back. So I've got this little jig. This jig will allow me to mark 3 eighths of an inch off of an edge. 3 eighths of an inch, inch is half of the thickness of a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood. So it's just a quick way to mark this, and I'm going to pre-drill some holes here. I want these holes 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge on center, because when I turn this side piece up on edge and screw it into the back, it's got to be uh, able to uh, screw right into the center of a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood. Hopefully that makes sense there. You can see there. And that's what that pencil mark does. It's just a real quick way to do that, and it lets me know that I'm in the dead center of the piece of plywood in the back. Now this back piece of plywood is very warped. So we're holding it flush to the bottom of the piece of plywood. The side is flush to the back and you can see it's elevated up off the table. That's the curve that back piece has in it. So we're just kind of feeling our way along there, making sure that the back is flush to the side all the way across. And as we do this, because our cut of course is straight here, it's going to force that back piece of plywood down flat and straight. And so next I'm going to put the top in. So what I'm doing now is I'm marking the exact location of the top where I'm going to insert the top into. And a lot of uh, the work involved in this project is basically locating things with uh, doing pencil marks and layout in order to get a real accurate assembly. You'll see that. Into place. And I've drawn that pencil line so that I should just be able to see that pencil line on top of this top board. And this top board also is really, really warped. So it's only going to be screwed into the side because the middle of this top board has a really bad curve. I don't know if you can see it's not matching up with the pencil line there. So we'll get the two sides in, then we'll come back and we'll push the middle up into place to get it so that it's straight. So it's definitely a little bit more work or a little bit more planning when you're dealing with cheaper plywood that is warped or is prone to being warped very easily. Uh, but it, you know, it doesn't take that much longer and it's probably worth the savings. You definitely don't need Baltic birch or any expensive ply for a project like this. Okay, so we forced the top portion up into place and we're holding it tight with a parallel clamp so that we can screw it in. And as we're moving along, we had to force a little bit more of it up. So it was a little bit of a sequence here. That top piece was probably warped by five or six inches down the middle. And I think I might have chosen a piece that was just a little too warped. So it was extra effort, but at any rate, it's done. But I do want to show you one thing here. Inevitably, when screwing into plywood into end grain, you're going to have some screws strip. It's not a big deal. I always start with an inch and five eighths screw. And if that strips, I'll go to a bigger screw, usually a two or a two and a half. The first thing I'll do after taking it out is I'll drill the hole out with the appropriate size bit for the bigger screw. And then I'll just insert the bigger screw. If your layout line's good, it'll go no problem. I have some various blocks around the shop that are different sizes. This one's three by four by five inches, and it's handy as a spacer. It's just one of my shop tricks to kind of speed things up. And I'm gonna use this as a spacer because I'm gonna have the, the clamp rack mounted upside down. I'm gonna put this bracket in, and I want the bracket to be four inches away from the top. So I'm just gonna use my three, four, five spacer on the four inch side, and that lets me know where to put the bracket. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna temporarily put the bracket in place, and I'm gonna pre-drill some really tiny holes. These are really just kind of marking locations for where I want the screws to be because I'm going to screw this clamp bracket in from the back. But rather than go to the back, do a big layout and figure out exactly where it's going to go, I'll just put it in front to begin with, use my spacer to get it the right sp spot, uh, line it up, put the holes, and then I'll have Maya, she's in the back there, she's going to go ahead and screw it into place. Then I don't have to worry about doing an extensive layout on the back. And that's how we're going to proceed to put in all of the individual clamp brackets. And the two clamp brackets that are on the far edges on the two sides, we're going to screw these into the sides of the carcass as well. This is going to just add some overall structural stability to the shelf. We could have probably saved a little bit of wood by not having extra clamp brackets go all the way to the edge, but I knew that would be important for the integrity of the structure. And here I have them all kind of laid out. I just happen to have some inch and a half by inch and a half square blocks in the shop. You could do that, or you could lay it out with a pencil and measure it, or you could cut some small spacer pieces if you want. You got lots of options there, but I did a quick layout to make sure that everything fit. 
uh, nicely according to my spacings and it did. And here again, we've got the same procedure. We're gonna set it in place with my four inch spacer block down below. We'll just quickly draw an outline of where this piece is going to go. Once that's done, we'll remove it. We will pre-drill some holes so that the person in the back knows where, the, where they're gonna be and where to put these in at. With that done, we're gonna put it back in place, put our spacers back in place, and hold it so that someone in the back can put the screws in for us. Now, if you're just working in the shop by yourself, you just put this thing in where it goes. You throw a couple of screws into that two by four to hold it to the back piece of plywood. Then you can go around to the back and secure all of those in fully. And when you come back around to the front, you can pull those two temporary screws back out. So it doesn't really take multiple people, it just speeds it up a little bit. So with that done, we're going to lay the clamp rack down on its back and I'm going to assemble all of the shelves that we have cut, the shelves and the sides of the shelves, in place down below and try to establish a layout. These shelves are going to be held to the back and to the sides and to each other with pocket screws. And of course, I'm also gonna put a few screws through the back as well, but primarily pocket screws. So once I get these set up, I'm gonna to need to indicate where those pocket screws go so that we can take them over to the pocket hole jig and do that part. And that's a rough idea of what that's going to look like. Now I'm gonna mark where I want pocket holes. I want them on the side here, the bottom there, I want pocket holes along the bottom here. Same thing over here. We want pocket holes along the side, the bottom, and the side, and the bottom. And this kind of gives me an idea of where to put those pocket holes so we put them in the right spot. Now we're gonna set the layout for those. We know about how far up to mark them so it doesn't disappear in the pocket hole jig. And since these are gonna hold a lot of weight, I'm gonna put pocket screws about every three inches, and I'll keep them about a couple of inches from each edge. So Maya is doing the layout for where the pocket holes go. She's getting an idea for how high to make her marks. And then she'll lay those out. And then we'll hand this off over to the person who's doing the pocket holes. And they'll just line up like that. I have the K5, um, uh, Craig K5 pocket hole jig. It's a really handy jig. Uh, if you're interested in this tool or any of the tools that I have, I have a link to those in the description below. Uh, this just makes it nice and fast to do and pocket holes are actually really really strong and they're ideally suited to a plywood carcass structure like this. There are a lot of different makers out there who make pocket hole jigs now. I've only tried a couple of them. My favorite is still the Craig series and both the K4 and the K5 work really well. K5 is a little more convenient because it's got the lever in the front which is a little more handy than having the lever in the back like the K4 had. But whatever you choose to use, I'm sure they all work uh, just as well for a project like this, just maybe a matter of convenience and, and speed. Now I'm gonna move on to creating an accurate layout on the plywood, both on the plywood sides where the shelving gets attached to them and on the carcass itself, the carcass sides and the carcass back. I wanna take careful measurements. I've got detailed measurements on the plans, but I wanna take um, careful measurements and transcribe those lines onto the project itself. This is going to help me get an accurate layout of where everything goes, make sure everything fits nicely, and is also going to give me a way to drill some holes once again from the front to the back. So if I want to follow up with some screws through the back to give the shelving some extra security, you know, I don't think anybody's going to stand or sit on the shelves, but if they did, we want it strong. And you see what's, what we've done here is we've done our complete layout. Layouts on the boards, on the, uh, the carcass itself. And that just helps us, uh, helps us with the assembly later and gives us an accurate layout, which is important. And now we'll just move right into the assembly phase. I'm holding this piece up, the side piece that's gonna go here, and noting where the pocket holes go. So I'm putting some holes outside of the range of those pocket holes because that's where I'm gonna send some longer screws through the back into this shelf. 
And here again, that's just in case I want this shelf to have additional loading. Uh, it's not necessary if you don't plan on storing anything heavy on the shelves, if you don't plan on sitting on them or standing on them, just not necessary. But if you want that extra load carrying capability, it's nice to be able to screw through the back as well. And I, we don't want the screws in the back to hit the pocket screws, and since you can't see them, we mark them first. Then we'll just put these boards in place one at a time, and we'll screw them in. Whenever possible, I like to try to clamp a board into place before we start with the pocket screws. Sometimes the pocket screws will have a tendency to make the board want to scoot one way or another just a tiny bit. And if you can clamp it or uh, something like that, it holds it a little more securely than just holding it in place. And that'll help ensure that we are real accurate right on our layout lines. Probably not critical, again, for a project like this, but it's always good to be as accurate as you can. And, and that's especially true if you're starting with some plywood that's really warped. So you can see we actually have to have this plywood, the whole thing clamped to the assembly table itself. The whole carcass of the um, shelf has to be clamped to the assembly table, and that's just because the back itself was still had some warp in it. But by the time we get these units in, these, these shelf units in, that's gonna help flatten it out the rest of the way. And just like that, the shelving system is done. Of course, we still have to screw it in from the back, but this is all we can do from the front. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and stand this unit up. And we'll test it out. And you might notice we have made a colossal error. <laughs> I didn't realize that these clamps would not fit because the clamp, the short 12 inch clamps simply don't open any wider than that. So this is one of those times when, uh, you know, you make a mistake and you have to fix it. Um, I thought that was important to show it on video and it's no problem. It was a pretty easy fix. We just pulled this bracket off. I realized where I had to cut this to. We'll take some measurements, get some nice clean lines drawn there, and we'll cut this lower portion of the clamp bracket off. Of course, it gives us a little bit less support, but these are 12 inch clamps. They're not very heavy at all, so I don't think it'll affect it anyway. These have been corrected, of course, on the plans, but I can tell you I did think about leaving them that way just to see how many people built them too long to begin with. But anyway, they're good to go. So Maya's going to go ahead and reinstall these back in place for us, uh, especially since I think it was probably her idea to make that mistake to begin with. Uh, I just don't think I make mistakes like that. So yeah, it must have been her. With the clamp rack itself complete, the next thing to do is to build a French cleat. Pretty simple, we just set our table saw blade at 45 degrees and we'll cut two pieces of wood for our French cleat. One is going to hang on the wall and one is going to mount to the shelf itself so that we can quickly hang the shelf or hang the clamp rack onto this uh, French cleat and we'll be able to move it around and take it down easily in the future. Now that the clamp rack is upside down, I did forget this. Uh, Maya's going to finish putting the screws in through the back to the shelves themselves, just to give us that little bit of extra holding support like we were talking about. And then we will go ahead and mount the French cleat itself. So I have the French cleat set up and a blue chalk line snapped so that this line is directly over the top shelf. So we're gonna use some long screws here, some two and a half inch screws. We're gonna go through the French cleat. We're gonna go through the back of the clamp rack itself and into the shelf. This is gonna give us a lot of holding support because it's going to carry a lot of weight, obviously. And then we're also going to run a series of shorter screws through the lower portion of the French cleat. And these are just basically bonding the plywood to the plywood. And combined, this probably has many thousands of pounds holding strength. And at the bottom there, you can see Maya installing a spacer block. The French cleat itself forces the clamp rack three quarters of an inch off the wall. So we put this bracket, spacer bracket on the bottom to push it three quarters of an inch from the wall. So the whole thing sits flush. Now we've already installed the French cleat portion on the wall, or we've put a couple of screws in and leveled it anyway. Now we're going to go ahead and finish up. 
And at each stud location in my wall, I'm putting three or three and a half inch screws in. They're gonna go all the way through this and into the stud. And in the spaces in between, some shorter screws. Then of course, we've just lifted the whole thing into place. Nothing. Okay. Next, we've got to install a couple of two by fours and I've done an accurate layout for them in here. These two by fours are going to hold the clamps that are going to go down in there. So I'm going to hold them in place and Maya is going to screw them in. Okay. It's important to do a layout here as well. Uh, layouts really help with a project like this. So here we're just using three three inch deck screws on each side. Collectively these will also hold many many hundreds of pounds so the 15 or so clamps that we fit under there will be no problem. And once again, I want to remind you, if you are interested in a set of plans for this, I do have a detailed set of plans available on our website. And our plan sales are really one of the main things that helps us support uh, the work that we do on YouTube. So if that's something you might be interested in, check it out. There's a description or link in the description. And that's going to wrap up this project. Thanks to everybody for watching, and make sure you check out our Christmas mallet sale.